Welcome to Reflection Thursday. The Old Testament prophet Habakkuk was in a disputing mood when he said, How long, Lord, have I called for help, and you did not hear? I cry out to you violence, yet you do not save. Why do you make me see disaster and make me look at destitution? Yes, devastation and violence are before me. Strife exists. Contention arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out confused. Those are verses 2 through 4 of Habakkuk 1. When God revealed his plan for dealing with the sinful people, guess what? Habakkuk disputed that. And in response, the Lord tells him to calm down and wait for a vision and then write down the message of that vision in letters so large that a passerby, or even if he was running by, could easily read it. Now, part of that message that Habakkuk is supposed to write down is this. The righteous one will live by his faith, or perhaps his faithfulness. That's Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Now, scholars discuss among themselves whose faith or faithfulness is mentioned. Is it the faith or faithfulness of the righteous, or is it the faith and faithfulness of Yahweh, the Lord? Now, I'm going to say in practical terms the difference is minuscule, because the righteous are faithful to God because they have faith in God's faithfulness. Now, what Habakkuk needed to learn was to trust God's faithfulness even when the Lord's methods in exercising that faithfulness was beyond his comprehension. In Matthew 26, 36 through 46, Jesus trusts the faithfulness of the Father, even though the Father remains silent and all the disciples are doing is snoring. Now, any doubts about Jesus' humanity should be eliminated as he tells his three leading disciples of his emotional agony. Jesus wishes he were dead now rather than face what's coming in the next 18 hours. He prays to the ground, begging the Father for a reprieve, and again, all there is is silence. Then Jesus utters the phrase, distinguishing him from the rest of us, yet not what I will, but what you will. And Jesus does more than utter that. He acts on that phrase, going to the cross as a criminal, betrayed by one of his own, deserted by friends, and rebuffed by the very people responsible for upholding justice and offering mercy. Jesus faced the unknown of death, being the first and only deity to die. And Jesus' only assurance was the Father's promise. Now, a growing number of scholars advocate an alternative to the traditional translation of Romans 3.22, which is namely the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Based on grammar and syntax, it may be more accurate to render Romans 3.23 as namely the righteousness of God through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to all who believe. Now, that translation again emphasizes what saves us is the faith or faithfulness of Jesus who proved himself more faithful than any other human. Do not trust yourself. Trust Jesus. Until next time, God bless.